Welcome to the Nature Photo Guys podcast, where we talk about nature photography from gear to our philosophies and everything in between. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back and relax. You're listening to Joe DeJardin and Chris Gibbs, the Nature Photo Guys. Hey guys, welcome back to the Nature Photo Guys podcast. Uh, we're super stoked for our guest speaker tonight. Sure. But uh, before we introduce him and bring him on, uh, Chris, what have you been up to? Um, well, uh, well, you and I got out to Lake Minnewanka there and uh, did a bit of uh, yeah, fun stuff fun. there, a bit of a sunrise <laughs> shoot. So I'm sure some of you saw some of our reels that have been posted there. Um, yeah, well, and we have uh, we have more to share. <laughs> we but, do. Uh, yeah, Minnewanka yeah. was fun. It was yeah, fun. For yeah, sure. we had a lot of fun, so... And then, you know, what? actually I was lucky enough to uh, join at, you know, me, I'm kind of a big, uh, a sports shooter as well. So I actually joined yeah, big the, Edmonton flame, right? Not, not at all. Edmonton flame. Edmonton flame. Edmonton flame. Yeah. See, you're, you're, you're a big fan. hockey fan, I see. Edmonton fan. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Flames all the way. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So I was actually able to uh, head to the Saddle Dome and uh, join the camera store at their mm-hmm. uh, uh, pro hockey uh, workshop, photo workshop, basically. So we actually got to, you know, uh, follow Jerry, um, Thomas for a while and um yeah we went all around the dome and got to take some shots uh went on the catwalk yeah it was a lot of fun we had a good time and we actually got to do that during a flames practice so that was pretty cool so oh cool yeah. right on yeah so you got you got to see the the setup up top the rafters like they use strobes right they use strobes up there yeah i, was yeah, like, yeah, I knew that sure. they did that and i wasn't sure mm-hmm. how many people use that just jerry's actually the one who uses those yeah um yeah. maybe some assistance of his here and there but uh yeah the, for sure you know the news shooters come in they just use shoot ambient right so it's yeah a yeah little different. But yeah there's like i think there's eight strobes up there and they took us across the catwalk yeah. and um, just about crap my pants. It's a little high up there. Is so, it? Eh? Yeah, oh, yeah, my God. Sure. Well, at some point, you know, there's a railing and then there's about a 10 inch gap and then more railing and you know, you can easily uh. just trip and fall. It's, <laughs> I don't know, it didn't feel safe, but you know, me and, and heights yeah. don't really go together. So yeah. So yeah. So, That's awesome. Yeah, though. Cool. I, I mean, the flames games I've been to, I could, I could see the flash. Good, yeah, I don't yeah. know about you, but if you pay attention, you can see when the flash most, well, nobody notices, right? No. They're paying attention to the game. And Jerry said now that, you know, when he tells people that they're there, that's all people can see now. So that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And once you yeah, know they're there, sure, it's so. like, oh, but, uh, and you, yeah. you, uh, you got out there a little bit ago as well. You got out to the field. Actually. Yeah. Family day long weekend, uh, headed mm-hmm. out to, um, Aram Lodge. I hope I'm saying that correctly. A-U-R-U-M Lodge okay. out near Nordeg. Nice. And, um, we went to, uh, explore Abraham Lake in the area. So it was yeah. really cool. Um, a little windy. Um, windy. Oh, I'm uh, surprised. I, I heard it's not that windy there. <laughs> sure. You should see some of the reels I'll be posting too. Um, some cool bubbles, awesome cracks in the ice, that kind of thing. Nice. Um, went into a few falls, got some pretty cool shots there. Oh, it, it was a nice four days of just, uh, rest, relaxation, um, nice. you know, exploring, um, went into Nordeg a little bit, uh, a little bit, um, went to, I think it's called miners cafe. Okay. Had some phenomenal pie. I guess they're well known for their pie. We actually brought one home. Oh, nice. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, not too, too much over the last little no. bit, but you know, at least, you know, you and I got out a few times anyways to, uh, yeah, we did. Yeah. you know, get the cameras going and, and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah. yeah, that's, that's about it for now. So. And the cool part is we got lots of plans, lots of interviews ahead or, or, or more conversations, I guess, in the future. Yeah. So we got fun. another we got another there. three booked. Yeah. yeah. And and you know, it's it's just a matter of, of lining people up. Everybody's busy, right? Oh, you for know? sure. Yeah. We can do them back to back, or it might be, you know, week to week, month to month, right? It oh, really yeah. depends on what, what everybody's doing. Uh that's right. You know, and especially with spring coming, um, it's gonna get busy for a lot of things for a lot of people, right? So yes. um and us but included. yeah. <laughs> but, oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't wait till May gets here. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, cool. Well, you know what, guys, we are super excited. Um, our guest this evening is Mark Payton. Uh, he's an extremely talented wildlife and other type of photographer, photography photographer. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That I just recently found out about because I thought he was just a, a wildlife photographer. Right. But, yeah. he, but he photographs other genres too. So we'll let him uh, yeah, stay tuned talk to hear. about yeah. you. Yeah, you bet. Sure. So, um, well, let's introduce him. Uh, everybody, uh, let's welcome Mark Payton uh, to the podcast. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. 
Oh, we're super excited to have you here. Um, you know, Chris and I have been talking about it. Uh, we're really excited that you uh, uh, accepted the invite. Yeah, for so, sure. So, um, yeah, let's just get right to it. Sounds good. Yeah, so, I mean, um, Mark, why don't you tell us a little about yourself and uh, so the viewers know who you are. Yeah, I'm, uh, I've been doing photography since probably the, the mid-'80s, back in the, the film days. Um, my first duty station uh, uh, picked up, a, I think it was a, a Minolta Maxim 7000 or 9000, so I was a Minolta guy for a couple of years. Uh, took some photography classes when I was in Korea for a year just to pass the time, stay out of the bars and kind of <laughs> yeah. live a clean life. And uh, anyways, uh, uh, moved up to Fairbanks, met my wife, got married, um, you know, shooting a lot of the northern lights and stuff like that. And of course, I developed a lot of film, uh, learned how to develop film, do uh, black and white uh, color film, print film. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, anyways, the, I'd, I'd go out and shoot northern lights you know in 40 below weather and and my camera started freezing up and i was like this isn't gonna work so got frustrated picked up a a, a canon f1n i believe it was which was kind of a high-end uh mm -hmm. film body I, i'm sure i don't know if you guys uh shot film before but uh, uh oh, yeah, back yeah. in the I, day so i but, started uh, back on film yeah for sure yeah, so but, film yeah but anyway that didn't uh you know, went into that because it was all mechanical, uh, except for faster shutter speeds required the battery. So anyways, that kind of solved that, that problem. And, and, uh, anyways, that, you know, never, uh, basically shot, shot that body until I moved in, uh, to digital, which was in 2006. Um, and everything was, you know, I shot some weddings, uh, probably, I don't know, 20, 30 weddings on film, mm -hmm. uh, back in the day. And I, I guess I did have some other uh, uh film bodies after that that had the eye control focus and i think the elon oh, 2e or you know the 6e i don't know if you have yeah, that, but that and the a2 i think an a, yeah, a2e a2. or something yeah yep. a2 it was but anyways mm -hmm. uh so i shot those uh and then uh, uh about 2006 uh we were we had moved from the east coast back to montana and um you know, and still just doing some portrait stuff and occasional weddings, but I, I, I wound up moving into digital, started out with a 20 D, um, man, I had like a 70 to 200, um, 24 to 70 and, uh, you know, just, just a few, a couple lenses. Oh, actually, yeah, that sounds about right. But anyways, uh, and then I, you know, progressed to the R5 and, you know, started shooting more. Actually, that's not true. Uh, the one DS uh mark one i think it was 12 megapixel camera whatever it was the one uh, ds yep yeah before the one dx's so yeah um but yep. anyways then that image quality just didn't stand up so um i'm trying to think of the next uh uh 5d the 5d oh the 5d mark oh the 5d mark, i had the 5d, 5D. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 anyways mark three yep but um you know and that's what that was my bread and butter for weddings i shot a bunch of weddings Mm -hmm. uh you know family portraits uh senior portraits stuff like that still haven't touched wildlife to this point right so really? I, I, wow. I, yeah i literally uh you know shooting with a 70 to, actually i was shooting a lot of primes uh because i thought all the wedding photographers were shooting 85 1.2s oh, 51.2s right. yeah. 35 yeah. and then one day i was like you know i'm tired of this uh inconsistency and uh, uh with autofocus and and the shallow depth of field it just just wasn't flying and i decided to rent uh from lensrental.com uh decided to try the zooms and uh and after i shot them i was like i'm done with these primes i sold yeah. all of them <laughs> yeah and uh, and i shot the, the 24 to set or I, I think i bought the 7200 first everything was 2.8 of course yeah yeah um I got the 24 to 70 and uh, I might've kept uh, like a 35, 1.4 for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, you know, so, and then uh, we'd go out to Coeur d'Alene. Um, we frequent uh, Coeur d'Alene, Spokane area, just kind of a getaway place. And, uh, and all of a sudden I discovered that this bald Eagle migration happens every end of November, uh, December timeframe. There's about 300 bald Eagles that show up to uh feed on the kokanee salmon spawn 
Wow. So anyways, I'm out there and these guys got these giant lenses and they're just, I'm looking at the back of their cameras. I'm like, oh, this, this is just junk with a 70 to 200. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, so I think the next year I bought uh, uh, the two X extender, the version three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course with good light, it, that, that worked, worked okay. And, and uh, I was like, and I, I finally, I just, I, I booked enough weddings. I made enough profit. Plus, I work a full time job as a federal employee with a Montana Air National Guard. Oh um, wow! Okay. Uh, so I had that income that pays the bills, and then this was kind of uh, business. Uh, yeah, sure. To make make a profit, but also obtain some gear. Yeah. And uh, anyways, I decided to drop uh, about six grand on a on that four hundred two eight version, uh, the mm-hmm. IS version one, mm-hmm. and. Uh, and then once I got that in my hands, then the I that was in 2018. So I didn't even have have that lens until 2018, January of 2018. And uh I just fell in love with it. So went and bought the 1.4 extender um just to see. But you know, usually if I'm gonna throw one on, just throw the two X on just because sure, you know, either you're gonna shoot, you know, I'm gonna shoot the, the 400 uh just plain bare, or I'm gonna throw a, an extender on if I can't get close enough. But, and that's been a great combo. And, you know, I, I think, uh, 20, I can't remember, you know, I didn't even make it into Yellowstone until 2019, uh, that winter, of course we have the national bison range here. So, um, I did a lot of, there's a lot of bull elk out there and, and, you know, of course the bison and, and some black bear. And so I kind of got to test everything out there and, and then uh, got hooked on North Yellowstone, you know, that Gardner to uh, Cook City stretch there. Um, God, we've never been and we've been talking about going like we just, yeah, never been down and um, just I've seen so many amazing uh, wildlife images there and just heard of the experiences because, you know, a lot of the other guys we follow, you know, posting video of, you know, the wolves and the bison and the bears and oh, stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's uh, definitely a must place to go. But uh, I've definitely been to Montana and Coeur d'Alene and the Coeur d'Alene Spokane Valley area quite oh, a bit. Yeah, yeah. I used to camp there quite a bit when, uh, you know, for the years with the kids when they were growing up and been been a lot of Montana, Kalispell and, and that area. Um, the road to the, or going to the Sun Road, we've done a bit of that. But on the wildlife mm. side, yeah, I haven't been down there for that yet. So, well, you know, Glacier's never been been that that great for wildlife um except for the mountain goat and there's some big horned sheep up there and mm, then there's sure. there's there's moose they're a little bit harder to to, to come by and um you know uh, i have been through jasper and Banff and all that uh funny story though uh my wife and i with our six i think she was six no 18 months old we we headed down uh in a honda accord moved sold all of our possessions uh, ship a few things in boxes to the East coast of Virginia. Uh, hence I'm, I've got a little accent here. You can tell, <laughs> but that's also uh, part Texas too. But anyways, uh, we drove in the middle of winter, uh, down the Cassiar highway came up through uh, cut over through, uh, Jasper, uh, stayed in Jasper overnight in one of the hotels. I don't remember which one it was. And then and of course I was more into landscape then. So I, you know, got lots of the cool winter. Everything was shot on slide film. Yeah. And, right. uh, so I still have some of that, but, uh, anyways, we, um, drove all the way down through there, uh, stopped, stopped that we lived in Sealy Lake or my, my dad did, uh, we, uh, you know, stopped there, visited and then head on down all the way to Texas to Georgia and then back up to Virginia with a 18 month old. And it was, uh, oh, wow. it was wow. quite a ride, but, but yeah, to, to cover that in the middle of winter, uh, in a Honda Accord <laughs> front wheel oh drive, my gosh. So, but you know, wow. I, I was a seasoned winter driver. So, you know, it yeah, wasn't, yeah. wasn't anything. So, so uh, is that the only time you've been to Jasper then since then? No, or I've been, been, I've been through it. Since? No, I haven't been in, uh, since nine, 1993. I haven't been to Canada. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Of course, now I have to have a passport to get there, which uh, <laughs> yeah. is just an op is an obstacle. I, I know I could get one, but, uh, uh, so I need, I need to get that. Cause I've been, since my social media kind of, uh, blew up, uh, over the last few months, I've been getting a lot of Africa trip offers and, you know, yeah, New nice. Zealand and, and a, a bunch of 
bunch of different places. So, uh, 100%. you know, you, you got to kind of sort through, um, uh, what's legit and yeah, yeah, you, you know, sure. what's not, but <laughs> so, yeah, no, a hundred, hundred percent. But I mean, even coming to Canada, like, I mean, but, I know we, we've got a lot of, uh, some of the biggest bull elk, I think in North America up this way too. Right. Yeah. So, I've yeah. got a few few buddies that went out there they were just out there this past past fall and got some amazing uh footage with the bull elk there and you know i know you know jasper that that town uh is, is full of elk just walking around like yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like squirrels uh, yeah yeah uh, for sure but but yeah that's you know i definitely want to get back up there and I'll, I'll probably get a passport this year just so i can you know take a trip up that way yeah but uh but yeah, I, you know, like I said, I didn't start wildlife till 2018, and then uh, I got uh, shipped off to Kuwait for six months in 2020. So right as COVID kind of hit, and oh. uh, so when I came back, uh, I I got off my quarantine stuff, and then they they uh, my wife and I took our first trip to Yellowstone, and well to to the Tetons in over 30 years, because um, we've been married over 35 years. Oh, and, wow. uh, congrats. But yeah, thanks. But it's been a long time uh, since I've been at the Tetons and yeah. I absolutely, I prefer that over Yellowstone. Uh, just the, there's more bear action. There's more uh, bull moose action. Um, and, and then it's just, the scenery is just incredible. So that's, that's my go-to place. Uh, nice. Of course, it's about six and a half hours from where we live. And um, Yellowstone is, is uh I guess about four and a half. So it's Yellowstone's oh, okay. more convenient. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. But, you know, it's, uh, I seem to have better luck every time I go to the Tetons and, and Yellowstone can be, be kind of hit and miss, especially in the winter, winter months. So, mm. cause, uh, you know, the bison might be on out of sight or too far away to shoot, or you're not mm -hmm. going to be able to, you know, to get to them. Um, and, uh, you know, like this last trip, I shot photos of coyotes and, and, uh, red fox and I, I didn't take a single bison shot there was uh because i don't know i'm a little picky i if it's not a big bull uh, i'm not interested um or you know maybe red dogs oh, yeah. those yeah. are good but um yeah yeah i'm i'm a i'm a, about big big bulls big rams big yeah uh, yeah i want impressive stuff and and you know a, a cow and calf in, in the right moment is, is a good subject too but Sure. I, that's just what I prefer. So I don't think you're alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's what we all tend to gravitate to eventually as, as wildlife photographers. Right. You know, you're kind of, yeah. you're trophy hunting with the camera. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. And I noticed you, you guys uh, are shooting. Of course I, I know I'm, I'm all over the place here, but uh, I, um, you know, once I, I moved from that, uh, the 5d Mark three, mm -hmm. I got my first one DX. Mm -hmm. absolutely loved it I, that was the first 1dx version uh and then about a year and a half two years later i got the 1dx mark ii which mm -hmm. i absolutely loved um no complaints and uh and then everybody's gravitating towards this uh this r5 and and uh and i'm still not 100 percent sold on it to be honest with you <laughs> um i i absolutely hate uh switching video mode from from mm -hmm. stills to video, uh, you know, I've even got the little red button program, but I just don't, <laughs> it, it just seems more cumbersome than the one DX ever did. So, yes. Uh, but I do absolutely love the, the megapixels, uh, that yeah, it has no and, and the image yeah. quality is nice and stuff right out of the camera. I mean, I, I don't have to do a whole lot to my images most of the time. Uh, you know, cause I, I use a light meter. I shoot everything manual. I, you know, so every I'm I'm basically looking and seeing where my exposure's at, and and of course, I like to shoot wide open, ninety nine percent of the time if if I can, if it makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, sure. not all mm -hmm. not all the time does it make sense, but um, you know, so so if you set that wide open to two eight and you get your sh shutter speed or your ISO where you want it, and then you just fill in the blank with the shutter speed and to yep. get the right exposure and. So it's almost like a program mode when you think about it, but, uh, because it just comes natural. So, sure. but, um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm stuck in the mirrorless world for now, I guess. <laughs> but you um, still have your one D. Uh, so I sold my one, uh, one DX Mark two, uh, to my oldest daughter. 
And, um, and so she uses it. She, uh, I've got two, uh, two of my kids are basically, uh, or one's full-time wedding and portrait photographer. Oh, wow. And, Great. and, uh, my oldest daughter does a little bit of real estate and, and, mm-hmm. uh, and uh also uh does photo uh you know portraits and and mm-hmm. part time weddings so nice but so yeah if i wanted it i could go grab it but uh, <laughs> i do i do need to get another body and i've been kind of holding off on the the r1 i'm hoping that's going to that's going to pop out cuz is as cool as the uh, r3 looks mm-hmm. i've got a couple of friends with those and they they say they're amazing i i still want more megapixels so well there's um, rumors in r5 mark 2 as well right so in the, yeah, in the 60s, I, I really missed that. Pixels, so I know, I know. Uh, was it you, Chris, that has the One DX Mark II? Is, J- Joe's or, got the One DX Mark II. I have the R5 yeah. and the R5C for the 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 cinema side, right? So, oh, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. And I, I just like, I like the build quality. I like, I like that integrated grip. I, I just uh, well, once you shoot a, a 1D series. It's hard to go back. I, I didn't want to go back to the. I couldn't. I couldn't agree that. more. I still have it here. Like. I was telling, I mean, you know, mirrorless and uh, DSLR and uh, okay. So there's just an adapter, you know what I mean? I, I, I can live with that, but it's going to be hard to, to let go. Cause like you said, I just, I love that thing's a tank, like built like a tank Oh, it is. and and that, that grip built in and everything. And it's just, and I mean, that's an, before the mirrorless, I mean, that was the camera. I know they made a Mark three, but that, that Mark two, I mean, um, even at high ISO has just killed it. Like I just, I just, it's going to be a hard camera to eventually let go. <laughs> so yeah, but I totally I, agree with you. You know, I've got my, uh, <clears throat> so I picked up that uh, version four uh, or version two of the 402 a uh, I think one. Yeah, we saw that. Yes, we saw your, yeah. your two comparisons. Can you guess <laughs> yeah. which one is which? Yeah, that was yeah. awesome. Well, that was yeah. kind of a plug to get somebody to buy the yeah. thing. But <laughs> oh. it's, you know, the funny thing is, is I didn't. Uh, I wasn't looking for that lens. I, that that landed in my lap uh, with a, a local video production company, uh, Burton Productions. Might as well plug them. Uh, a uh, uh, good group of guys, but they were reaching out. Hey, you know, anybody that needs a version two, you know, we're shooting reds and we don't, we don't really need it anymore. And oh, nice. they shot some college football games with it. And I mean, mm-hmm. it was a pristine condition. And I was like, you know, if it's, it's between this price and this price, um, I'm going to get it. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, anyways, I went and looked and it was just, just immaculate condition. Just like, just like mine, frankly, mine. Mm-hmm. I mean, except for a, a couple little uh, paint chips, uh that thing is is pristine and mm-hmm. as sharp as attack at 2.8 like mm-hmm. I, sure. I had no reason to get rid of it and uh it helps build these guns right here no <laughs> kidding right <laughs> yeah you i don't you know if you see some of my reels uh you know some some of those i'm shooting uh, uh it's the same setting that i shot the picture but i never did any behind the scenes mm-hmm. uh up until about well, maybe I was doing some before November, but before things kind of blew up, um, I wasn't really recording any behind the scenes. And on that last trip uh, to the Tetons, I was like, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to do some behind the scenes and, and see if I can make my reels more interesting. Yeah, and, for sure. And, uh, you know, that one with me throwing the camera up uh, unsupported and then it's a, a zoomed in shot of a bison uh, frost covered bison in Yellowstone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that thing just went nuts and, uh, I didn't anticipate it do anything, but, um, and that just changed everything. That was the game, you know, over 11.8 million views on it right wow. now, I think. That's awesome. Uh, oh, sick. Geez. So did you find, uh, did you notice a huge, um, uptake in, uh, your followers too on Instagram because of that or. Well, I don't know how's 22,000 followers in a day sound. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. That is I'm crazy. not kidding you. Oh, I was wow. gaining. God. And then I was gaining a, a thousand followers a day for weeks. Uh, and so, it's all reels. Yeah. Like I don't Basically even Basically because of the reels. I, mm-hmm. uh, I've kind of, it's, it's slowed down, s- slowed down a bit. You know, I think I'm at mm-hmm. 184,000 followers, but, uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, before Thanksgiving, I was at, uh, 49,000 followers. How's that for you? You're kidding. <laughs> so, Jeez. Yeah. So, wow. See, so cracked the code. That's for sure. Cause I mean, they well, were talking about it, you know? Yeah. So I, you know, I actually, uh, 
the funny thing was I had one go viral, uh, not that big, but it, it got 8 million views. It was a bull out bugling in Yellowstone at nighttime and the bull stand in the middle of the highway. And of course I'd, I'm not in any hurry. So I, I pull up to him and flick my high beams on just to see if he'll move. And I turn him back down just to keep him out of his face. And he just starts bugling. You can hear bulls all over the place. So I get my, I think I had an iPhone 11 or 12 and mm-hmm. it wasn't, wasn't as good as this 13, which is the one I shoot most of my videos on. Oh, okay. And I shot through the window and it's, you know, my uh, Toyota FJ Cruiser's uh, windshield has been pelted with so much rock and grit and debris. And I've got yeah. cracks all in it. Like I'm surprised I haven't gotten a ticket yet, but, <laughs> uh, but anyways, I can see out of it. And, uh, uh, but I, you know, the video through the windshield wasn't any good. So I reached out and he bugled real quick, but I put a six second clip. I think it was on uh, Instagram of him bugling and then dropping his head down. And and that one blew up and I, I doubled my followers in like two weeks on that wow. one. So, what? So, and did you use any special like hashtags or did you just do hashtag reels? Like just, oh, I used to hashtag the crap out of everything. And, yeah. And, uh, it, it, you know, it just it really doesn't matter. I, uh, you could do four hashtags or 20 yeah. hashtags. I don't think it makes, makes a difference. Sure. Not it for the reels would. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so, and I, I was still posting photos and posting, you know, trying to post reels with behind the scenes with the camera and the tripod set up. And I don't know, I don't know what, what happened, but of course, once I was kind of going viral with this frost covered bison one, uh, then, every video that I put up was, was getting, you know, uh, 20, 30, 40,000 views or more. And, wow. you know, 4,000, 5,000 likes, which, you know, I was struggling back, you know, back in November, if I got four or 500, uh, likes, you know, yeah, what? It, sure. it's, it's so true. I mean, when mm-hmm. I first started with Instagram, I was getting, I was getting the, the likes, um, like just on still images, uh, you know, I don't know, say, five years ago, um, some of the images, eight, 10, 12,000 likes mm-hmm. that same picture. Now I would get two or 300. Yeah. It, yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely yeah. And I used ridiculous. to, I'd get occasionally I'd get an image that might get, you know, two or 3000 likes mm-hmm. or something, but, but mm-hmm. yeah, it was just, and finally I was like, well, I'm going to start doing these reels, you yeah. know, and it, uh, it like I said, I, I think it took me four years to get to nineteen thousand uh, followers, mm-hmm. uh, and and I was posting everything, you know, mm-hmm. weddings, yeah, uh, just it, and it, that you definitely don't want to do that. You gotta, it's gotta be a little niche, uh, sure, yeah, for yeah, sure. You know? No, I hear so, you there, yeah. And anyways, it took it took four years to get to that, and then that that viral bull elk back in Memorial Day weekend of of twenty twenty one. Uh, got me up to about 44,000. And then I just kind of kept creeping up. Um, wow. You know, but, but nothing was really catching, you know, mm-hmm. catching on fire until, till that, that bull moose trip uh, up to the Tetons. That's kind of my pilgrimage each year is around veterans day weekend. I head up that way and uh, you know, stay three or four, four days if I can, um, you know, cause I work a full-time job and, and then uh, you know, I'm gone when I'm, uh, doing that, that gig. Uh, so when I come home on the weekends, I kind of like spend time with my wife and my grandkids and oh, 100%. Yeah. so, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. So, but you know, I retire, uh, in June 1st from the military and my federal side, and we're going to do some KOA work camp stuff. And, nice. uh, so I'll be based out of Missoula, you know, 99% of the time. And that's going to sweet. That's a great gig. Yeah. And it'll get me, you know, more time maybe on my, my days off to go out and, you know, get to Yellowstone more often or whatever, but, yeah, sure. yeah. um, but we'll be kind of busy in the summer with the KOA until, you know, so once fall hits then yeah, you can guarantee I'll, I'll be out that way. So. hundred percent. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Well, you know what, Mark, you covered a good five of our questions there. <laughs> so yeah. We were like, so how'd you get into photography? We covered that. What gear do you shoot? It's obviously <laughs> Canon. Yeah. Uh, all all the good stuff. It's uh, your go to mm-hmm. lens. Certainly sounds like the four hundred two eight. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Four, with a couple extenders. Uh, yeah. How do you find the four 
the 400 to eight with the two times version three on there. Are you, I know it's 805, six, but are you getting the decent image quality? Like are a lot of your images is shot at 800 or are they? Yeah. Yeah. If you, oh, look, they are, right? if you okay. look at a lot of them, I don't, I don't like to crop a, a whole lot. Uh, mm -hmm. I like to get as, as close as I ethically can yep. Uh, yep. to animals. And, you know, of course in Yellowstone, uh, that's, that's 25 yards, uh, you know, for anything, but, but wolves and, and bear. And then that's a hundred, which frankly, I think a hundred, a hundred yards is too damn far. Um, to get mm -hmm. a, a decent shot, but that, you know, 400 with a two X giving me 800 mm -hmm. is pretty good. And it, it's, it's been an excellent combo on the, on the one DX Mark II. Um, I know this last trip I was using it on the Fox and I think I was getting, a, um, having some issues with, uh, uh, heat shimmer. Oh yeah. Which, yeah, that's, that's just, that's a killer. And, I, and it doesn't matter if you're using an extender or not, but, um, I was just getting a, a lot of soft stuff when, you know, the light was just the way it was, you know, you, you got bright light and, and, uh, cool air coming off the ice or, or snow. And that's mm -hmm. just, uh, just ruins your images. You know, they look, look great if you like a soft image, but, uh, but yeah, you know, I've never had any issues with, with the, the older version, uh, the first IS version and, and either one of those extenders just, I always felt like I got uh, exceptional results with it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping that's the case with a new one, but I, you know, because of the, the lighting conditions or, or the temperature offsets, it's, I had, I had uh, quite a few, I had to, to toss in the garbage. They just weren't any, you really? know, they weren't, okay. they weren't sharp enough. Mm. Uh, but it, uh, with the other, the other setup, it didn't seem to be a problem. I mean, I still got that obviously, but it's, it's so frustrating. Even in the spring, I'll go down to the Tetons to photograph, um, grizzly bears and, and, uh, you know, it's the ground temperatures still cold, but that warmer airs out and, and mm -hmm. you, you'll get these, you know, grizzly bears standing up, you know, on hind end and just like a killer shot and you go back and you look and it's just garbage. Right. Uh, and I don't care if it's the 400 two eight by itself oh, or know. whatever. So the reality of uh, wildlife yeah. photography, right. You know, you oh, just, it's, yeah, it drives me insane. I, yeah. You know, uh, so either you, you get out, that's why you need a, a, a camera that's really good in low light. So mm -hmm. you can either shoot early in the morning or late in the evening. Oh, 100%. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's where that 1DX, the Mark II, was awesome. Like, yeah. I couldn't, some of the images I got at like uh, uh, 12,500, I actually shot at some wolves at 25,000. And, and don't mm. get me wrong, you know yourself, like uh, they're a bit on the grainy side, but you know, you run them t through something like Topaz and you print them on a canvas, you know, mm. like I always say, feathers and fur uh, work great on canvases. Mm. Man, it's hard to tell it was shot at 25,000, you know, like that. that yeah. That's what I mean. It's going to be hard to part with that camera. I you know, know, I've shot some Milky Way that I've probably pushed up to 10,000 or mm -hmm. 12,000, but I've never gone beyond that. I've yeah. never, never been, and I've never used Topaz either. So, yeah. Right. Well, it was an accident at 25,000 because oh. I teach a lot of, uh, like, I shoot um, uh, manual the auto ISO, and this was about 1030. Uh, well, it was getting close to 10 30, say 10 o'clock in the evening in Jasper. And mm. I was heading back in and um, I had my, uh, you know, it was a 500 uh, F4. And um, I had it set to one 500th of a second because that's, I know I can handhold that in a, in a pinch, right? You know, mm -hmm. uh, that shutter speed. And uh, uh, here's this wolf and we we're kind of playing uh, peekaboo and, you know, I was getting some images and stuff. And uh, I got, um, I got an image of uh, her coming and just turning and looking at me. I got three frames off, but like I, like I've told everybody, if I didn't have the auto ISO, it would have just been a blurred mess. Right. Mm. So I'm still happy. I got the image, even though it was at 25,000, I still have it. It's still something I can work with, mm. but that's the reason it's at 25,000. You know, yeah, um, I'd probably use that if Sasquatch walked out across. Yeah, the <laughs> exactly. I don't, I don't know that I'd do that. <laughs> exactly. Do way, so. and, and it was one of those things I'm heading back. I'm like, oh, crap, here's a wolf, you know, take some photos, do what I can with it. Right. But I, I never want to push it that that high. It's just it was it was uh, 
it was a really great opportunity. And um, like I said, it didn't actually turn out all that bad, right? So, hmm. um, but yeah, that that camera again has just been phenomenal. So I, I have to say, I rented the 400 28 Mark II for the Elkrut in the fall, and hmm. I, I've seen, you know, I, I saw your content, and and there's a few people that have been using the 400 28, and I was just so impressed. So I thought I, I'm going to rent this for the for the fall. And honestly, after seeing the content that I created with it, not only photo, but video, I don't know. I, everything else I see, it just I'm just not happy with it anymore. The 402H just mm. produces an, a, an amazing image. And, you know, you were talking about the little red button on the R5 going, you know, the, the scenario. My whole goal with getting the R5 was to, because I do a lot of video, my background's mm. video more than photo. But okay. um, in the last number of years, I've been doing a lot more wildlife and had been doing landscape photos. But the the scenario was it was going to be a perfect hybrid camera for me so i could go from photos to videos but the amount of issues that and joe and i have both been through this the amount of issues that you're okay, switching over to video and you got your nd on or you forget you have your variable nd on and you want to take photos in low light conditions it just was a massive hassle so and i and i do a lot of real estate videos as well so hmm. it was, i was having some overheating issues just uh with the camera being on just way too long for video so that's why hmm. i picked up the r5c so now i'm pretty much dedicated to the r5s the photo camera and the r5c's the video camera and i'm just decided i'm just not fooling around anymore you know what i mean i just kind of separated those scenarios and and i've seen you know it seems to have worked for me uh but yeah, yeah i mean i'm going to be for the spring here i'm going to be renting the 400 to again in canada though, unfortunately that lens is sixteen thousand dollars, so i can't afford that right now but uh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one day <laughs> yeah well i know i know a guy that's got the version one do you uh, oh. he's got a pretty oh, big that. price on it <laughs> okay well, i'll keep an eye on that <laughs> uh, i actually got a guy from calgary uh kind of kicking tires on it oh, uh, right? oh okay so, so i i think it's a great lens i mean if, uh you know i i need to sell it to put on the balance to, to pay pay the newer one off but yeah. you yeah. know if i don't don't sell it soon i might get rid of the new one and just keep shooting the old one because it's been a great lens i nice. i actually aside from being heavy that's it i mean i don't sure. really notice a an image quality difference uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, in fact, my mind keeps telling me that the older one's sharper, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah. So, but it's it's a like I said, um, that's been a great lens. And I, I, you know, a year after I bought that four hundred two eight, the the version one, I I uh, I found a pristine six hundred f four version one is, and I and I got it, and I and I had the one dx at the time, and I could not get that thing to micro focus adjust to get a sharp image no. uh oh serious wide open no i don't know what wow the, i mean we're talking the the glass was pristine and yeah it, was, it looked like a museum piece yeah and uh huh. and i just like uh i had three months i sold it i sold it to a, right? uh, a lady that photographed dogs i think uh, in a dog shows or something yeah yeah and uh you know if you stopped down to f8 you know it was but it was decent, but it wasn't, it wasn't 400 to eight sharp. So I, mm. I just like, there's what's the point in having it if I got to stop it down. So, um, oh, exactly. no kidding. Yeah. Cause I've had huge success micro adjusting all my camera bodies to my lenses. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, and I, and I have too, but it wasn't working yeah. for that one. And wow. you know, it's a shame. <laughs> it's a shame that I didn't have the R5 at the time to, to see if, if it would yeah. have been okay on that body, but I just, yeah. it just, and I didn't like the like hand holding and trying to shoot that. It just seemed like it was front loaded uh, mm -hmm. way in the front. It was heavy and uh, it, it wasn't uh, as practical uh, for the stuff I like to do. Like I, I can do super tight headshots, uh, you know, where you're basically doing chest height and yep. Yep. horizontal shots. And just I could shoot in front of a set of dumpsters um, as a background. Uh, with a, a portrait shot and, and it just completely blurred out at, at two eight. You can't, you don't even know what's in the background. And, mm -hmm. and you know, it's, uh, there's just a lot of things I love about that lens. Uh, and um, I don't, don't really have a use for the 600 anymore. Now, now that I know what I can do with the two eight. So. Well, a 400 with a one, four and a two times. Yeah, what exactly. more do you need for wildlife photography? Yeah. A 45 so. megabyte sensor. Um, you can crop in if you have to. I mean, like it's it's done. You're there. Like you yeah. know, because um, uh, I was gonna I was gonna ask you if you if you were thinking of getting something larger. Because uh, 
Um, you know, the 600 is probably a decent size, uh, good reach for, like you're saying, like Yellowstone, where things are a lot farther away. And then you put it a few times. Well, I know you'd still be shooting at, uh, that'd be what, uh, 1200 F8, but still, I mean, some decent reach there. But Well, uh, so the, if you use the uh, 2X on a 600, uh, <clears throat> that was almost useless. Um, I, I felt um, it, it didn't... Uh, it was a lot slower to focus and it, it was, you know, in and out, in and out. And, and uh, I wasn't having very good luck with that. I think it works great with a, a 2.8 lens, but mm -hmm. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know about an F4. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, at least I wasn't having good luck with it. So, sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I, that's just, that's been the setup I've been going with. And I tell you what, if Canon doesn't get, get with the program, uh, Nikon's got that 4028 with a 1.4 built in uh teleconverter. Mm. Uh, I might have to jump ship if they don't. Get what? Oh, what? <laughs> we may have Whoa. to end this conversation right now. Here. <laughs> Holy <geez. laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, so, so if Nikon's <laughs> listening, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a plug. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, nice, nice. Yeah. No, I, you know, I'm not, I'm, I've been loyal to Canon, uh, mm -hmm. well, since I guess, uh, would have been nine, uh, 1988. I've been shooting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I've been shooting longer, but, uh, mm -hmm. but I had that little brief Minolta. Sure. Of course they yep. went bankrupt, yeah. but, um, yeah. but yeah, I, had, uh, I've been diehard Canon cause you know, once you acquire all the glass, it doesn't make any sense to switch to Sony and then back to Nikon. And, oh, it's so you know, hard. It's so expensive. Yeah. A hundred percent. Sony makes an awesome product. Nikon yeah. makes an awesome product and yeah. and I you know I don't curl my nose up to any of it but I I'm just not familiar nah. with it so well even I I switched to Fuji there for a little bit cuz the Canon the R5 wasn't out yet so I switched to Fuji um the video was great I loved the video but I still had the adapter and I still used all my Canon lenses and then when yeah. the R5 was out and once I was comfortable I just jumped back to Canon and I still had all the lenses from like 2012 right so it makes sense nice. and yeah do you use that uh, uh rf to ef adapter that's got the uh where you can drop in your filters is that what you do for video yeah so we so joe and i both so we have the um the one the one R ef to rf adapter that's got the ring on the control ring on it and then we also have the variable nd so i have the variable nd in mind but i leave it in there so i i literally mm. have one on one camera one on the other then that's when you go to grab the other camera and go shoot well this two weeks ago or three mm. weeks ago i had this issue there was a merlin in the back tree or whatever i went and grabbed my r5 and i'm in a hurry i put my 100 to 400 run out there i'm like why the hell is am, am I shooting at 12,000 ISO? And it's middle of the daytime. Well, <laughs> my, of course, I forgot my variable ND was on there, right? So, so it is yeah, a bit of yeah, a pain in the ass. And the problem is when you take the variable ND filter out of it, it won't shoot. You have to put a blank in there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I heard that. But now I'm actually using um, a matte box on the video side. You can probably see it's actually right behind there. So, oh, so yeah. I have a matte yeah. box on the video side and um, and with a case, basically. So it's got filters that actually drop in and and, um, and you can magnetize them right to the matte box itself. So it's a, it's a for mm. video, it's a way better system. Not And it mm. works for photo as well, but case has got some other photo filters that we use as well. But um but yeah, yeah, just trying to separate the scenario is better. As I get older, I think it's separating the scenario is easier in my head than trying to jump back and forth on the video and photo side. And that neutral density filter, the variable, does that uh, if it's in the 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 weakest setting, does does that reduce any light at all? There's still stop or two there. Yes, absolutely. Still about to yeah. stop. Yeah, You're still about to stop. Yeah. yeah. So okay. that that's what we've noticed. So we're we're trying to at the end of the day to remember we got to get that off and just put on the plain old adapter, you know, mm -hmm. the last hour or so, unless mm -hmm. we're doing uh, unless we're doing video because you know near the end of the day every stop counts, right? You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. that that ND on there, so we'll just switch them out, right? So and yeah. when I'm doing when we're doing video, so I always shoot everything at 24 frames per second most of the time, unless I'm doing um, 60 frames or 120 frames or whatever. So when it's low light conditions at 24 frames per second, the ideal um, shutter speed is 1 50th of a second. So you can go mm -hmm. so much longer than than photos. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. 
Yeah, it's a yeah. battle back and forth in our head we've had for multiple the last couple of years. Hey, Joe, we've, should we shoot video? Oh, should we shoot photo? I'm just going to do yeah. both. No, it just, just you can't. either yeah, I'm going to go out shooting photo that day or I'm going to go out shooting video that day. And it's just, it's just mm -hmm. easier. So, yeah, I, I very rarely shoot, try to do any video uh, with the R5. Uh, I, I have it set up to where it shoots everything flat. Right. Uh, yeah. So to, you know, like a log file, but, and I and I use Final Cut Pro. Um, oh yeah. Of course, I have Premiere. Uh, is it? Yeah, whatever the Adobe one. Yeah, is. Adobe Premiere. But yeah. I haven't used it in so long. I don't remember how to use the damn thing. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so I was like, you know, I'm tired of messing with this thing. I'm just gonna uh, buy a Final Cut Pro. Sure. And, and uh, use it, and it's been uh, a lot easier to work with, I think. And uh, that's how I do all my my little panning shots. Um, yeah, that's remember I, I messaged you and asked you if you're actually using an app on your phone to do the you know quick cuts and stuff, but you had said you'd done it all through Final Lane. Yeah. yeah, and I, uh, but I don't build the reel there. I, I I literally get the still image that I want to put in my reel, mm -hmm. and I create the however long I want that to be, and then I save it to my phone, and that's where I build my reels. I don't do any. Oh, I see. Uh, because I don't know. I haven't tried putting the, the the audio track in Final Cut Pro and timing it that way. Um, oh, you know. I see. So you're doing that pan or that zoom in or whatever, just that small little clip and final, boom, into your phone. And then, yeah, it's easy enough to make the reel then, right? So Yeah. Because um, yeah. you yeah, have your, your behind the scene video on your phone anyways, because you're recording it with your phone. Yeah, or any anything that uh, whatever whatever I I tweak in Final Cut Pro, uh, I'll dump dump onto the phone. Uh, like if I have to, the behind the scenes stuff I shoot in in uh, Apple ProRes or whatever. Uh, most of the time, and I'll if I need to tweak it, then I'll dump it back on the phone. But yeah, I, I got a horrible work process. I <laughs> I need to do some YouTube and to 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 pick up some tips and and um, you know, but, uh, you know, I mentioned in our pre, uh, show conversation about, uh, you know, I have, uh, subscribers on my mm -hmm. Instagram and I, so I've been showing some tutorials on how to, how to do that. Cause the, the, I get a lot of people asking me, how do you do it? Well, I just give a blanket answer, final cut pro. Um, mm -hmm. but if you want, want to learn more, I have a step-by-step -step and I show you in my subscribe. So you subscribe one month, you could dump it. It costs you five yeah. bucks. Sure. Um, you know, sure. I'm not getting a, a ton of subscribers, but uh so they just go on Instagram, Mark, and they just subscribe right through Instagram. Is that how they yeah, find that for yeah, you? Yeah, it's uh there's like a tab where you can follow, and then if you look over to the right, there's a, a subscription uh tab and you click on it and it tells you that you can cancel at any time. And oh, okay. Uh but it's it's $4.99. Uh I think uh once your account gets to a certain level. Instagram offers that option. And I don't know, it was, I would kind of hemmed and hawed back and forth whether, whether I wanted to do it or not. Cause um, you know, that meant I had to do content for both and, and I, I really need to do some more subscriber content. Um, but what I'm finding is either I, everything's got to be 90 seconds long or I got to go live. Oh, I so see. So if, yeah. if I want to take it longer than 90 seconds, which, you know, uh, I don't know how many outtakes it takes me to do a damn clip of something simple. <laughs> I don't like the way I said it and I'll just keep going over and over and over until I get the way I need it. But I, it's so, yeah, it's either 90 seconds or I can go, you know, up to what is it? An hour or 45 minutes or something on a, a live, live event. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, the so. subscriber content is all basically reels. Is it? No, I don't do, I, it's more tutorial stuff. Uh, okay. Yeah. Like I give a tour of the, the, the camper too. And, nice. and I've, I've actually tried to do some, uh, uh, a live event out shooting some sawwood owls and I've got the con, uh, well, I don't have the, the live video because it wouldn't allow me to save it. Uh, even though I had cell cell signal, I didn't have a strong enough service. Oh, so so I was out there, I had the camera set up, I had the the owl and eye level in the tree and I'm talking and I'm, and, and I was like, this is going to be awesome. And I had, a, uh, I think a, a couple of people watching. So they were the only ones that got to see it. And then when I went <laughs> to save it, it kept 
time and out in error and it wouldn't it wouldn't take it so i oh no that's too bad i was bummed i was like well this isn't gonna work because that was the whole intent was was to show subscribers you know some stuff that sure. not everybody else gets to see absolutely so, yeah so now i recently learned how to uh screen records on my mac and then of course i got to record it in uh 1080 uh what 19 by 1920 by 1080 yeah there you yeah. go but it's vertical oh yeah 1080 by 1920 yeah so then i can show show my subscribers how i edit something or or uh you know because that seems to be what people want to see is how to how to do the panning effect sure and mm -hmm. and how to edit and i'm you know i'm i'm no whiz at editing i i you know i i know some tricks that maybe a lot of people don't know but I don't sure, do, a, yeah. I don't have to do a lot of stuff to mine because I expose properly, but yep, you know, right. so, sometimes the lighting's not that good and you know, uh, you take what you can get and you fix it in post-processing. So, um, so, so what are you doing, Mark? So when you're out there, you're taking a tripod and you're attaching your phone to a tripod and then you're, you're recording yourself. Like, is that what you do? No, you know? it's so, uh, Oh, the, okay. I have the, I have the camera on the tripod with with it lined up on the owl and then i've got my phone in my hand or on a, oh i get you yeah, yeah oh sure yeah for sure yeah. That, yeah you do a lot of bts stuff like that you're kind of moving yeah. and yeah. that kind of thing yeah that i thought in this case popular. here yeah i thought in this case here you're like you had it recording you as you were shooting and you were talking into the phone like it was mounted on something else oh right? so, no not not I yet see. i i might i might uh i actually on my really right stuff tripod not not this uh uh, photo pro one but the the older uh, tripod i have i got a mount on the gimbal that lets me put my uh, handheld dji i think it's the om6 that's okay. a cell phone gimbal have yep. you seen those mm -hmm. oh yeah yep yeah mm -hmm. those things are amazing uh like i said that's uh i had a viral video on uh uh my our fifth wheel uh that i talked about before the the show started but uh i shot that 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 thing blew up uh, just showing the inside of my camper. I'm kind of going through people asked me if I had a drone because yeah. <laughs> it was so smooth <laughs> until they see your reflection in the mirror. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's super smooth. Um, I've been really impressed with it. I've had uh, the last three models that they, they had and, and uh, just kept upgrading. I kind of wish I hadn't got the last one, the OM5. five uh, you can actually leave the, the phone or everything in the open position uh and turn the power off and then you can just turn the power back on but with the newer one you when you close it that's the only way to kill the power otherwise oh. your battery just runs runs down so i, I don't oh, like okay. that feature so so don't get the om6 get the om5 <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and is that video on your insta like can it can somebody yeah. scroll down and find that no, video or you had to go way down probably <laughs> yeah this, way down this summer yeah. uh because yeah. i the the problem when when you're a wildlife uh, content creator and you post anything that's not wildlife, nobody gives a crap. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so, well, you know. that's the thing, you know what, that kind of segues into uh, a question we have here now. Um, so yes, you, you got to keep your, your accounts um, uh, niche specific. So if it's going to be wildlife, it's going to stay wildlife. Now um, I started following your other account and mm. it's uh, like a portrait wedding kind of yeah. an, an account. Yeah, like, I think that's fairly new to you. It's it's like heavy. Account? No, well, yeah, that that account is uh, because um, if you were to go to the very beginning of time uh, with my wildlife account, there's mm -hmm. there's all that stuff. Same stuff is is there, but uh, the the portrait one I kind of added because to to get like a lot of the people that I shoot weddings for are referrals. I don't mm -hmm. advertise mm -hmm. and, and I got wedding planners that, that, that line me up, but they, they go to my website and they're like, well, this guy, all he does is shoot wildlife. He does. <laughs> that's right. That's so, right. Yeah. So they're like, like, I don't think he's going to be a very good wedding photographer, but <laughs> exactly. But, but, exactly. Uh, and anyway, so I, I built that and, and, and hell, I haven't posted anything on that in months. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Well, Just no, I guess I did try a couple of reels here recently, but, uh, I, I need to start posting on there, especially if I want to keep, you know, booking weddings or portrait sessions, but you know, it's, it's, it's got 400 followers. So yeah, so, sure. you know, good luck uh, for anybody seeing it. So <laughs> is a lot of your portrait and wedding stuff word of mouth these days or. Yeah, that's all it, it is. Yeah. Uh, and of course I just got on Facebook uh, right after I kind of blew up on 
uh, this past November. So I started, started that back up, but I dumped my previous Facebook account, which it was all portrait wedding stuff, mm-hmm. uh, okay. back in 2020, uh, cause the whole politics thing, everybody was just going batshit crazy. Um, just, you know, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, I was just like, I'm done. So I just, <laughs> I, I dumped it. I didn't want any part of it. And, uh, and now I found out you can get paid for, for reels, uh, on Facebook. Uh, of course I make, uh, I get paid for real views on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so I was like, and I found out you can make more on Facebook with less views. So oh. I was like, well, but I got to get up to a thousand followers. So everybody follow me on Facebook. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So good to know. Well, obviously, obviously all this is going to be uh, on, uh, on the video and then the description. Yeah. And stuff. So you're saying with Facebook, you can start monetizing the reels after a thousand followers. Yeah. I think, think you have to have a thousand to, you have to be offered to, mm-hmm. um, it's an invite. Uh, mm-hmm. so it may not happen right at a thousand. I don't know, but sure. Uh, so anyways, I'm basically, copying instagram reels and dumping them on sure. facebook sure. Um, yeah 100 percent. and it's just less work and and mm-hmm. you know i'm just trying to build some kind of an audience mm-hmm. and uh but yeah i think uh three million views will, will make you about twelve hundred dollars a month in views there where it takes 11 million views to get 1200 on uh, instagram oh, interesting for, for, oh, wow. for a 30 day cycle so so yeah. when you go to uh, people that don't know this when you you got a 30 day window. You, you, and I, I guess, uh, the, you guys up in Canada don't have this, uh, this option to get paid for, for real views. I think is that, that probably is. We're just not that high. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. I, I think I've found out from some, uh, other Canadians that, uh, that might not be available, but oh, okay. Um, okay. I guess they could chime, they could probably drop a comment on your YouTube uh, sure. and yeah. let us know. Yeah. But, you yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. But, Anyways, what happens is say your, your period starts from the 5th of March to the 5th of, uh, April, uh, whatever you post in that 30 day window, you can post up to 150 reels in a month. Okay. And, um, but if that blows up your last reel of the month blows up on the last day, you're not getting paid for, for those views after, um, oh. Oh, okay. so, so once once 30 days is up, anything you post in that window, you're not getting paid for those views. Interesting. You might, it might draw more people in, which, sure. you mm-hmm. know, I still have videos that I posted back that I'm, I'm still getting lots of likes and comments and views on, but, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, your, your whole pay window goes. So, mm-hmm. and, uh, it's, it's tough. The first hundred bucks is easy, but, uh, then that, that second hundred, you need, you basically need a million views total views to get, to get that. So, uh, so, so yeah, it's, if you think, think, uh, and then there's a whole nother tier, uh, above that. I haven't reached reached that level, but you can make quite a bit more, uh, if you're got even bigger accounts. So yeah. 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 So do you, do you, the vertical view, the vertical videos now, aside from Instagram and, um, Facebook, I think that you have a TikTok as well. Right. And, and do you also, yeah. do you also post them as YouTube shorts as well? Cause it technically you can kind of use that vertical video for four different yeah. things, right? So, well, so I've only got a couple of shorts on YouTube and okay. I've got a, a couple goofy, I got a, a spotting scope review video. Uh, that's horrible, I, but I, I uh, seen it. I watched it too. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> seen it. Did it put you to sleep? <laughs> no, it was good. It was good. Yeah. Anyways, that, you know, that like I can, I can talk to you guys, uh, yeah. or, or an audience and I'm okay. But when I got to talk to a green light on my computer screen or my phone, yeah. I can't, I can't complete a sentence. I got to stop and start <laughs> over. Like my wife is like rolling half the time laughing at me because I can't, I, I don't know what it is, but as soon as yeah. I hit the record button, I'm yeah, all yeah. tied and it's just, yeah. Yeah. No, I hear, yeah. yeah. Too funny. And, and uh, so that was a struggle to get that one. And, and, uh, but now I'm getting more comfortable, like with these live events, mm-hmm. which I hate that you can't actually talk to your, the people watching, I mean, you, you mm-hmm. are talking to them, but you can't hear them. And mm-hmm. a lot of right. times my wife, I'll have her read, read out some of the comments to me because I'm recording it on my phone. So, and, uh, you know, I, 
I'm way overdue for some glasses. Let me tell you, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I have a hard time, you know, unless I'm up, uh, you know, arm's length from the phone, I can't, I can't read them. So yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's tough. So I, you know, but yeah, so I get on these, you know, you get a little bit of butterflies when you hit the record button, you start the live event. And then once I get going, I'm fine. But, um, the first few minutes, eh? Even us trying to start the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once yeah, you get it going, it's awesome, right? You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, you know, just, uh, I'm going to keep trying to do these live events and, and, uh, try to keep adding stuff to subscribers and, mm-hmm. you know, if, if people can, can try it out for a month, if that doesn't work, you know, uh, I appreciate everyone that follows me for sure, but, uh, and, and subscribes, but, Sure. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to, you know, get little different revenue sources, um, you know, to try to help subsidize my, my not so good retirement check that I'll be getting. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, the, these days, passive income of any sort helps, right? So it's just, yeah. uh, you know, it's multiple so, streams. Yeah. 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 You know, it's just, yeah. you know, like, you know, if you're going to try and make a living, uh, just selling wildlife photos, it's going to be tired. If you're going to try and sell, try and make a living, uh, wildlife, um, uh, stock, you know, that's going to be hard, but you know, if you do try multiple venues and you got money trickling from all of them, if one's not doing too good this month, but something kind of blew up that month, you know, it really helps. Right. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And 100%. I, you know, so I've made in photography, I've made probably 95% of my money in weddings. Uh, mm-hmm. that the money is just way way better than any print sales that I've ever had. Should um, be very lucrative weddings. Yeah. I did them for over 20 years too, Mark. So, and I shoot and um, I'm, and I don't even deliver prints. I, I, I shoot digital edit, deliver six to 800 images. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, of course, full day shooting and, mm-hmm. um, you know, and then I probably got 20 hours of editing, probably the worst mm-hmm. being the, the calling. That's mm-hmm. the, that takes probably longer than anything. And then, you know, sell, sell some, you know, prints here and there, because uh, the way I have mine st- set up is that my client's portrait and wedding, I, I'm just basically charging for me to shoot. And then I'm selling them prints at basically my cost plus a small markup. So, mm-hmm. and they don't even have to do that. They can just download them. Um, I give them the digital rights uh, to sure. them. So, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, and then uh, aside from that, you know, I sell some wildlife prints and mm-hmm. makes make uh get paid monthly on Instagram real views and mm-hmm. um that little tiny bit of subscriptions that I got going right mm-hmm. now and mm-hmm. you know so nice but um yeah you know uh I'm hoping to maybe start doing some workshop stuff um you know take people out to shoot or show them how to use their camera or mm-hmm. um so that might be something I'll be doing you know and the, maybe the distant future or maybe, you know, sooner, sooner than later, but sure. Sure. Absolutely. And so, yeah, no, one-on-ones is a good, um, uh, you know, a lot of, um, people I know out here really enjoy the one-on-ones, you know, you take them off for a day or a half day and, you know, it's pretty wide open to, you know, even just sitting there going through camera settings, getting the camera set up, um, uh, going out shooting, um, doing a bit of editing, like, you know, um, kind of, uh, day in the life sort of thing people just love that you know yeah. um and it's personal one-on-one attention so um that's something you should certainly add to your your repertoire there you know on your website or whatever one-on-one with mark you know that kind of thing too so or even aside from workshops people are doing like the photo tours right they're just taking them around different mm-hmm. locations right so i was thinking about doing that of course you need a permit to uh to guide in yellowstone or the tetons sure mm-hmm. um and glacier too so i uh, i've got to get that first and then then mm-hmm. once i'm legal then then we'll oh 100 yeah, yeah. It's, we'll the here, it's the same up here mark we do the same, same up thing. here yeah. every everywhere kenanaskis jasper banff um i said kenanaskis um water water tin yeah. yeah we all need business licenses and all this mm-hmm. kind of stuff too to operate legitimately you know you need your liability your insurance yeah. and all this kind of stuff right so and in um, canada the national park is not just a uh Global, and you're not just across the country it's per park right so you have to actually, oh yeah. see yeah I, I gotta find out if that's the same case here um i haven't really looked into it too deeply but sure. if you get one for the tetons you have to have one for yellowstone yeah, yeah. So, yeah. that's up fast yeah, <laughs> but, yeah one but, time you I, know 
I thought about buying a, a luxury sprinter van with with uh, six captain chairs in the back and oh nice <laughs> and uh, you know taking people out uh, like you can drive North Yellowstone all mm -hmm. all winter long. Uh, you wouldn't be able to go into West Yellowstone, but you can mm -hmm. at least drive between Gardner and Cook City, mm -hmm. which you know frankly is to me is the the best part of Yellowstone uh, mm -hmm. for wildlife when it comes to wildlife. So mm -hmm. uh, especially if if you're a wolf watcher or whatever, I mean, yeah. Um, I'm not, I think wolves are neat. Um, but you know, to me, like coyotes and Fox, I, I'm legally allowed to get within 25 yards of them. So to me, that's mm -hmm. a more interesting subject than a, 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 a pee on the side of the hill. Um, <laughs> yeah, sure. Just, I, you know, I, I actually passed up a wolf this past uh, weekend. I went to Yellowstone or not this weekend, but the previous, I didn't, uh, it didn't even get my camera out. I, I saw one that was maybe a, a hundred plus yards out that was kind of lunging through the snow, kind of hopping because it was too deep. Yeah. And uh, it was collared and mm -hmm. uh, just like, yeah, not interested. And like, if I pull up to the wolf watchers with all the scopes and like, what are you looking at? And they're like, oh, we're, there's some wolves out there and they'll, uh, it'll be like, they'll look like ants on the side of the hill. And yeah. And and I get it that you know people love wolves and they're fascinated with them and I and I I am too to some extent but mm -hmm. but photography purposes nah I'm not even getting I'm not getting my gear out for that. <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah, you get a lot more intimate with uh with the coyotes and the foxes and that kind of thing, right? So Yeah, so but No, no, uh, 100%. Yeah, and I almost had a uh red fox it was hunting and it jumped up but it was coming straight at me. Um oh. and and it, it, it leaped, but it was kind of in a ditch, uh, in, in a, a wooded area, um, mm -hmm. not a man-made ditch, but just a little ravine. And it was a, a horrible spot to do it. And I, uh, but he came up empty handed and so did I, I just got that one, uh, <laughs> that I, on my recent post and, and yeah. uh, got a couple frames, but, uh, they weren't super sharp. So, mm -hmm. you know, sure. nothing to write home to mom about. So, right. <laughs> right. Right. A crazy cool yeah. experience, right? Yeah. 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 So I, but yeah, you know, it was a pretty quiet trip. I'd, I'd have to say the just, and, and I, I was going to, I, I love photographing bighorn sheep, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously moose elk, uh, but uh, there's a, a set of bighorn sheep, not in a specific area. You can almost always count on them. Uh, mm -hmm. They've actually moved out of the park uh over the last couple of years, because I always knew a set of cliffs I could go to and they'd be there mm -hmm. every time I'd come. Like you knew you're going to get bison, you knew you're going to get bighorn sheep. Yeah. Um, and, and they're, you know, so used to, to people that they're not trying to run away from you. So, sure. But, anyways, I'm heading home. <clears throat> I didn't get, I got one, one, uh, one ram in the park and he's, he's kind of broadside. It's a horrible shot. He's on the side of a cliff and, uh, kind of feeding and it's just like it was garbage mm -hmm. and on the way on the way home uh, my last day uh, I'm, I'm leaving uh, the park I'm out of the park actually and I'm like I'm gonna I just decided to turn in and and lo and behold there's one lone ram that the one the most recent ones I just posted and yeah I seen that yeah he crosses the road starts walking up the the side of this uh, steep uh, hillside and and I get some distance between me and him and I climb up above him. So as he comes up, I get, I got some pretty decent shots, I think. So, uh, and nice. that was shot, you know, wide open at two eight yep. at, yeah. at about 25 yards. So it was oh, nice. nice. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. <laughs> nice. Right. Wow. Yeah, so, Jeez. But, so what uh, is your, your favorite subject to photograph here? If there is, is there, is there one, uh, if you had to pick one, Mark, <laughs> Oh. Yeah. Well, it's I hard mean, as a wildlife photographer, I know, but you know, I obviously uh bull elk and when they're bugling, mm -hmm. uh can't beat that. Uh a bull moose uh mid-November, uh mm -hmm. you know, grizzlies anytime, I guess. Uh but you know, there's those rare occasions when you know they're they're less than a hundred yards sometimes, which is nice, but yeah. Uh, but you know, it's, yeah, I don't, uh, it'd probably be, uh, you know, and then of course the bighorn sheep, um, mm -hmm. we had a, I'm not going to disclose the location, but we had, had these, uh, world record rams, 
Uh, actually, one died of natural causes here in Montana, and uh, they were in this hard to get to spot. And uh, mm-hmm. anyways, somebody decided it was a good idea to turn mountain lions loose, and uh, they decimated the herd. Oh, so goodness. I guess they they, re- they relocated a bunch of them uh, in kind of uh, southwest Montana, and um, so I haven't been out to that spot to see what's left. But I heard I heard the big monsters aren't there anymore. So oh, what the, wow. I don't. Hopefully they weren't taken and they just moved them, but, uh, but, uh, so it's going to take a while to build that population back up, but it mm-hmm. was so close to where I live. It was, it was, you know, about an hour's drive. So, oh, wow. Wow. Crazy. That's too bad. Yeah. So, but yeah, you know, bighorn sheep, when they're not stuffing their face, they're pretty, uh, pretty good to <laughs> photograph. So mm-hmm. that's the worst thing is just trying to get them to stop eating, you know, yeah, on their own. Yeah. Obviously yeah. I'm not going to stop their behavior, but. No, but, uh, of course. Yeah. But yeah, and, you know, a dream uh trip would would be to go to New Zealand to photograph the the red stag uh roar with mm-hmm. a, you know, um that that's something I'd I'd like to do one day. And I've I've gotten gotten an offer. We'll we'll see if it pans out, but um mm-hmm. de- definitely like to, to go do that and then uh I did get offered a uh Africa trip to Kenya. Um I think I can't remember the specific spot, but I need, I need 10 of you to go with me. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Cause then, then my church free. free yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, um, nice. That's awesome. With, with maybe a little commission to go, to go with. Yeah. Me. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Well, that's awesome. Um, yeah. So what, so. so what do you do to, um, you know, we can always improve, right? Like we're always learning. Like, what do you use or what do you do to improve your photography? Like, are you, is it like uh, listening to podcasts? Are you watching YouTube videos? Um, are you reading? Are you like, you know, I'm a big YouTube guy. I love YouTube. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've got a Same. bunch of guys I follow, um, you know, and um, there's still a lot to learn. So what do you do for your, for your education? Like what's. Uh, yeah. So, you know, i <laughs> I feel like on the, on the still image side, I've, uh, there's nothing else for me to learn. Uh, I, I feel like I, I know I'm not, I don't want to sound condescending, but I, th- I think I, I, I know more than most, or at least mm-hmm. with, uh, I'm up there with, with the skilled photographers and the videos where I suck. And, uh, you know, so I, uh, I feel like if I'm going to, if I need to learn anything, if I need to learn how to do final cut pro, if I need to learn how to, do premiere pro it's all youtube like mm-hmm. i'm not spending 100%. any money on courses i'm not mm-hmm. uh I, I i learn by watching other people do mm-hmm. and and then uh, me practicing and and perfecting that so the more i do something the easier it is to do it um and uh i that's that's how i improve uh but it, yeah. it's you know, like if I need to learn how to do a certain technique or, or, uh, I mean, you don't think I, I, uh, came up with that panning, uh, technique. I, I had to do some YouTube and <laughs> to, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to find it. So sure. that, I'm not going to take the credit, but I can't remember who, who I found, but it, it took it, yeah. man, it, it took work and work to find like the hardest part of YouTube is typing in what you want to find, like, cause it's out there. I, trust me. Like, and I have people always tell me, you know, about wanting to go to college to get a college degree in photography. And yeah, that's probably gives you some great marketing skills and, and mm-hmm. give probably give you an extra edge and in, in some ways, cause you got the credentials and whatever, but frankly, I, you could, uh, I don't know if you've ever, you've seen goodwill hunting, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. where the guys talking to him in the bar, Matt Damon, and he's like, you could have got, you know, $50 late or 50 cent late charges at the public library and could have got your learned all that stuff. And yeah, I feel like education. YouTube's the same way. Yeah, yeah. sure. I mean, it's just the, the stuff on YouTube is just insane what you can learn. Mm-hmm. And I, I'd like to start maybe sharing some of that. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to slowly start putting content on there. Sure. Uh, yeah. Try to build a channel, but it, you know, it'll be, it'll be painful. I'm sure because uh, you know, the whole editing and, and Final Cut Pro, um, I know the basics, but, you know, trying to put it all together and throw a music track to it. And and then yeah. you got the whole copyright infringement stuff. And it's just like, yeah, it's, uh, 
there's there's a lot to learn but like i said uh that that's how i i try to improve is if if i feel like i want to learn how to do something new i get on youtube and i just start watching stuff so well, Chris, yeah. um, so can you address that with the copyright? Yeah. The, the, so I run a video business. So basically we do video and photography. I actually subscribe to a company called Soundstripe. So um, mm. Soundstripe is is all across North America and basically um, it's licensed music. So it's, there's a subscription fee per, per month or you can pay for a year. And then you have all the options to use any music that is on that site. Um, it's not an extra charge as part of your subscription. And you can use that for any of your videos. Those those videos can go on any of your YouTube channels, on TikTok, on on uh, Instagram, on all that kind of stuff. It's just not popular music, right? But mm. it's, they've got all the genres. I mean, you're not going to find Metallica or something on there, but um, yeah. you'll, you'll find something like that on there for sure, right? So, um, but that's the bas basically the easiest way to go is to subscribe to a company that actually you have licensed music from and use that content mm. for sure. So that, so on our, our YouTube channel, I have three YouTube channels, one Joe and I share, and I have two others and I use licensed content on all those from Soundstream. Hmm. So, oh huh. yeah, I, I know there's some of those services, but like I said, if you want to try to use the new popular music, you know, I mean, there's, I guess you could do a, a screen record to get the video or the audio, and then you could throw it in there and just not, not post it with the audio content. And then you could get the popular song off of Instagram and line it up and it would you, you could make that work uh part of the problem is that it'll probably get taken down because basically like if you if you for example you can, if you create a reel your video create it on instagram use popular music on instagram and then save that video and put it on youtube oh no you can't do that you can't do that right so no, no, no. yeah no, so. but I'm, I'm saying the a work a workaround to use instagram music on an instagram post uh you could and build your reel in final cut oh yeah you you could if you could get the audio to kind of play in the background so that you could time it um oh i get you just, just yeah. don't include the track because it's not mm -hmm. going to be a it's oh, going to be a saying. substandard quality gotcha yeah and then you just kind of line up your that same popular track in um mm -hmm. on instagram so but yeah I'd, uh like sometimes i'll save my video to put on facebook and it won't let me download with a song yeah um so those don't make it to Facebook. I just, right. I'm, I'm not going to go and try to recreate something there, but, and, and YouTube's even more fickle about oh yes uh, uh, that kind of stuff. And, and uh, so, but yeah, you know, that's, that's what I do. Uh, like I said, if I want to learn stuff is, uh, is YouTube and I don't really go out and buy books or magazines or any of that kind of stuff. Sure. Mm -hmm. So well, if you have, ever have any video questions, let me know. So I, I, I can help yeah, you out Yeah, no, I'll so. definitely pick your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So but my biggest thing with the R5 is like, you know, if you go into video mode, yeah, like, I seem like the 1DX, I could look through the eyepiece and I could I could hit the autofocus button and it would focus and you could follow the, the square. Yeah. But I don't seem to have that with the R5. It seems like I have to put my head back and touch the screen that looks blurry to me because, um, I, <laughs> cause you need glasses. It's, it, yeah. I need glasses. <laughs> uh, so it's, that's, that's kind of frustrating. Um, sure. and then if you, sometimes if you, you tap it, it tries to take a picture or oh, actually that's in still images, but yeah, you just have to have it configured prop it, the, the right way. I mean, actually I find the R5 focuses better to the eye on the video side than the R5C, which is the cinema mm. camera, which has the hybrid uh, photo and cinema menu built into it, right? The R5 actually ha has the tracking. So the cinema menu in the R5C actually comes from the C70, the actual cinema camera. Oh. So the eye tracking in the R5 is actually better. So I I still use the R5C for video all the time, but for the R5, um, even like for this exact moment, I can actually see the eye tracking my eye right this second on the R5, hmm. which I'm which I'm using as a webcam right now. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. you just got to huh. be set up correctly, and yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, obviously, I, I just need to get on YouTube and watch a, a couple more videos on it just to see what I'm not doing right. But oh, sure, yeah. Um, like I said, I my iPhone does about ninety five percent of what I needed to do right. uh, for the behind the scenes stuff, and I, you know, I'll. Uh, occasionally do if i have a, a, a bald eagle or an owl that's perched yeah. that i know is not going to move then it's easier to do the video then sure yeah so sure with the camera and then i've been shooting vertical video with those right so mm -hmm. which i know would kill you if you needed to use it for anything else but, right mm -hmm. um 
but well, the like, resolution is nice. <laughs> yeah. And we still actually use the vertical, like even on our podcast, we still use the vertical videos. And then what we do is we just, you know, mm. in, in premiere, I just layer it. So the mm. layer of the same video and blow out the background and blur it out. So it's kind of not over black. It's over the actual video that you're shooting. Right. So yeah, it makes I've it a little more entertaining, too. right. Than, than that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And then well. so you guys are, um, uh, still post them mainly still images for the most part on, on your Instagram. I do a lot of video on my own now. Yeah. yeah in the last two or three, we're just kind of corny reels, you know, we're having fun <laughs> out there and stuff. Yeah. I posted a bull out bugling there. It's probably shot up to about 7,000 views or something in about a day and a half, but I haven't had anything. I had a Pika video. <laughs> <laughs> no, with a, with a stupid voiceover, go up to like three hundred fifty thousand views or something. A peak are running with some grass in its mouth, you know. But yeah. some of these bull elk and some of these grizzlies and stuff, yeah, I haven't gotten anything maybe over fifteen thousand views for a lot yeah. of these reels. But um, yeah, like well, you said, the, you just got to kind of hit your stride. You got to hit one, right? Yeah, you know, I still see <laughs> that people are getting thousands and thousands of likes on still images. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not sure why, but some, some, yeah. some of them are, yeah. And, yeah. you know, obviously there's a lot of great images out there, but I, I feel like, like a, a, a landscape image or, a, a wildlife image, uh, on a, a little tiny image on your phone, uh, a still image just is, is frankly kind of boring to me now. And I feel like, uh, that that's why I started introducing that panning, uh, mm-hmm. effect because it, you can show from one edge of the frame, or you don't have to do the whole uh, frame, but it, and it shows you more of the image, and it just looks more dramatic and dynamic than than a still image does. And sure. and uh, like I said, they just don't do do that well for me when I do post them. Um, well, and that's what uh, that's what Instagram wants. They yeah. want video. They want reels, mm-hmm. right? They they want that kind of content, and they've made it pretty obvious. Because I mean, it was almost overnight where. You know, like you said, you get thousands of 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 likes, and I was gaining a lot of followers and everything. And then overnight, I'm like 150 likes on this picture. Like really, like it's just it it was it was basically photo the video overnight. I'm just so it's been a struggle for me. I know Chris, he's a video expert. So, but for me, mm-hmm. trying to figure out all this stuff in reels and and trying it's it's been it's been a process but i'm getting the hang of it i mean it's you know um, i'm able to put short little things together now using premiere rush on my phone mm. right yeah you know? i've played with um, that a little bit yeah so and it's super easy to do putting a bunch of stuff together and transitions and a little bit of music and whatever like that so it, it's getting there but it's obviously the way it's going so yeah i i just still find and find that the the instagram <laughs> app itself is the easiest way to to put a bunch of clips together um oh yeah in fact yeah. i started creating folders to save my behind the scenes so i'm not scrolling oh. on my phone you know mm-hmm. to, to go back six months you know three thousand videos totally. or whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah. exactly yeah. you know i have a one terabyte iphone 13 pro and um I don't know. At some point, it's going to get filled up. <laughs> oh yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Every every upgrade grade is going to be bigger because I mean, just the the file sizes are getting that much larger and better too, right? The content. So yeah. The when I'm out in the field on the video side, I'm always shooting 8K on the R5 or R5C, oh, wow. and the only reason I'm doing that is for future proofing, right? So so down the road, the stock footage companies aren't asking for 8K content now, but they will at some point. It might be five years down the road. I don't know. But at the end of the day, I'm using using that content, the 8K content to create 4K. So for example, if I can't crop in, it's still 8,000 pixels wide. So for video, I can crop in and still like 50% and still get a beautiful 4K video. So I've been putting all my, using all my video clips for multiple purposes. So using Mm -hmm. it for YouTube, using it for the 8K for future, I'll just stick that away on my server. And then I put the 4K on YouTube. I I can crop a vertical video easier with that and use it for a reel. So it's kind of multi-purposing. And I started, we were talking about passive income earlier. So I've been starting to put um, uh, video content up on stock footage site. There's a company in Canada called Blackbox. They're worldwide 
And they actually currently, um, they're a stock footage aggregator. So you submit it to them and they actually submit it to currently nine different stock footage companies, Adobe stock, <laughs> Shutterstock, all this. So you don't have to submit it to every one individual. So another right. path, passive income concept or idea that you might want to consider down the road as well, if you start getting into video a little bit more too. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to definitely look into that. Joe and I keep talking about the fact that we're, you know, we're setting up time lapses while we're actually out there shooting. So you can use that content for other things too. Right. So. Yeah. I saw your time lapse on the frozen lake with the, uh, you sent me some behind the scenes with the wind. <laughs> yeah. through there, Joe. Yeah. You sent me yeah. those too. Those were hilarious. Yeah. yeah that, was, that was a little breezy. Yeah, for sure, man. It was so, so good, but. I've, I've always wanted to, uh, one of these days I'm going to play around with that. Uh, you know, recently I just picked up a, uh, uh dji um mini three pro drone oh yeah, yeah um yeah and uh i'm gonna try to go ahead and get my drone pilot license so i can actually legally charge nice uh but but you know flying it's fun but flying and filming is a bitch <laughs> i can't i'm, I'm struggling mastered with that it. yet uh, oh my god <laughs> and you know i even bought the uh the um their high end gimbal um, help me out. I can't think of the. Do you, are you familiar with DJ? Yeah, yeah, I the, love the, DJ. The are you talking about the Ronin? The RS3 Pro. Oh, you have the RS3 Pro. Well, I have yeah. the RS2 sitting right there. But yeah, yeah it's yeah. Uh, but I bought that with, wow. with my Instagram view money. Nice. Um, and the drone. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I have a lot. I have the DJ um, Air 2S, and that's I'm an advanced oh, okay. pilot here in Canada. But the problem yeah. is with nature stuff here in Canada. Well, close to where Joe and I live, it's illegal in all the parks, right? So anything that you get mm. close to the mountains, I'm assuming it'd be that way down there too, right? But um, we, yeah, we can't fly anything anywhere near. Oh or, yeah, yeah, no drones yeah, at all. Yeah, so it's a little unfortunate because you know I basically do the, all a lot of that for real estate only, right? So. Yeah, and I I actually got that because uh, the drone, thinking that I'd get some hero shots of you know me packing the gear, walking up to the edge of a cliff, and getting the, the oh yeah, you know the flyby and and uh, but yeah, I'm I'm basically waiting for things to warm up a little bit so I can get a little bit better at flying it. So sure. Well, the beauty part yeah. of it is you can just set that right and then just let it do it track yeah. you, so you won't actually yeah. have to worry about trying to film yourself. <laughs> yeah, true, but um. But yeah, I'm always trying to come up with some new ideas for for reels because my engagement's kind of dropped off here the last couple of weeks. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm still gaining followers, you know, about a hundred a day. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's it's uh, I was hoping to get to two hundred thousand before it slowed down, but um, yeah. But you know, it is what it is. So well, the oh, the cousin Eddie one was a classic one at Christmas there. Yeah, MT you know, I didn't, get monetized. <laughs> I didn't get monetized for that, by the way. They, really? They, uh, they flagged that one. Oh, no uh, way. <laughs> yeah. Twice. I did it last year, too. And uh, <laughs> they uh, they they basically demonetized it. I wasn't getting paid for it. But oh. I was like, I don't care. I'm going to post it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's hilarious. <laughs> so, what, so, Mark, I mean, I, we're, we're getting close to the end here. Um, uh, it's just... Uh, I got a couple more questions for you. Um, what is your biggest challenge right now that you see in your photography career? So I know you said you're going to be retiring. Um, you're going to be doing uh, the KOA. Uh, but as far as your, as far as the photography career portion goes, like um, what, what is it right now? Is it uh, social media? Um, <clears throat> I, um, I mean, I, it's obviously income based too, but um, what do you see? Like, what is it now that you're working on to, uh, well, I, that's just it. I, I need to start working on it. I'm, you know, I was, my wildlife account is, is pretty big. So, uh, when I post stuff, a lot of people see it, uh, but only about 10% of my followers actually see it. And, uh, you know, so just trying to get people to my website, um, I'm getting mm -hmm. a lot of product deals. Um, uh, I'm, uh, photo ambassador uh for the photo pro e9 you can see the tripod in the background mm -hmm. okay um mm -hmm. but anyways they're sending me a couple more of those tripods uh other tripods uh to test out and mm -hmm. and review and and i got the uh, guru gear backpack sent me yep. uh, some stuff and then cotton carriers uh sent me chest harnesses and i got spot mm -hmm. and scopes with ghost sky mm -hmm. optics and i um the unlimited ville internet uh, wireless internet sent me uh, a router modem that I'm 
uh, you know, all these are giving me kind of commissions and the Knicks handmade boots out of Spokane, Washington. Yeah. They, I see nice. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Those, those have been really nice. Uh, uh, I was super stoked when they decided to, um, um, ask me, you know, to basically do kind of a collaboration deal with them and, and, um, a bunch of great guys and gals out there, but, uh, um, but yeah, those have been great, but yeah, so I got, you know, got these partnership deals to keep kind of coming in. I'm not going to get rich off any of these, but, uh, every little bit helps. And, uh, but yeah, you know, the biggest obstacle I, I think is just, uh, trying to get traffic, you know, like, especially like weddings. I've, my intention was to shoot, a, you know, maybe two weddings a month. And, mm -hmm. uh, that's not, not looking too good right now. I'm, 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 I've got two booked for the, uh, for the year right now. So, mm -hmm. so, uh, usually I'd probably have about, uh, six to eight by now. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just, um, you know, maybe I'm gonna have to start advertising, uh, or, you know, just kind of working at a little bit more. And obviously I need to work on my other Instagram account, my yeah, YouTube account. And I guess just trying to find balance the time between my part-time work, which I'll be doing at KOA, Mm -hmm. you know trying to have time to get out to the field to shoot mm -hmm. that's where i'd meet a lot of people i'm a pretty sociable guy mm -hmm. uh, when i'm I'm out in the field i'm talking to, to to people and and uh answering questions i'm not rude i'm a pretty likable guy i think yeah sure uh and cool. uh so i you know i like to help other people and and mm -hmm. uh but i can spot somebody you know the old grumpy pants uh that you see out in the field and and uh, it, it, it you know 15, 20 seconds into something I can tell like, yeah, I think I'm just going to go the other way. This guy's, he's not going to, you're not going to warm him up. <laughs> yeah. 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 Occasionally I can do it, but uh, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think just trying to balance, you know, time and still have time for family time. and to go do stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it's time consuming, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, I don't, I probably spend uh, in the morning I get up, I try to have a, uh, a reel kicked out by 7 AM. Mm -hmm. Um, every day just one a day uh at a minimum and uh you know so i i might spend uh two minutes putting some clips together but i'll spend 15 to 30 minutes looking for a damn song <laughs> 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 so so yeah but it you know the biggest thing like i said is just time so yeah oh, yeah and that's it I, I think struggle. that's yeah for all of us yeah, yeah for sure yeah. So uh, last question here, Mark, um, as a photographer, what's one piece of advice you would give to somebody starting out this day and age? Cause, cause it sounds like you've been really, I mean, if you look at the, uh, when you started your wildlife career, 2018, 2019 ish, like back then, I mean, that's only really within the last five years, four to five yeah. years and you, your Instagram and like you've grown I think very fast in those five years, oh, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, and keep in mind, I only mm -hmm. had 19, 19,000 followers last May and that's all off of reels. That's unbelievable. It's all off of reels. So, so yeah. Uh, so basically my, listen to Instagram is what you're saying. Well, no, so <laughs> reels are give, the way to go. <laughs> here's, here's free advice. Uh, <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of people already know it and you can take it with a grain of salt, but for Instagram, uh, uh, my word of advice is, is the anytime you post engage with your audience if somebody comments on your post you, at yeah. a minimum you need to reply with a thumbs up or or a thanks or something yeah and and reply to every single comment mm -hmm. and then you need to go out of your way to uh, like at least 20 uh, like or comment or both on at least 20 other people that don't follow you just random content it's stuff that you follow but like i like to follow hashtags mm -hmm. and not a ton of people um and i just find that by doing that you know out of those 20 people maybe one or two more of those might follow you so you 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 know mm -hmm. you need to engage with your audience i guess sure is the biggest thing and then for somebody just getting started out you know gosh i don't know in today's world you know i guess buy what you can afford uh don't, you know, if, if you can afford uh, an expensive or a more expensive tripod, you get, don't be afraid to spend the money on that uh, because that's going to last you probably your, for, you know, 20, 30 years, if you get the right one. And, uh, but, you know, don't get hung up on 
on getting the latest and greatest on the cameras, you know, you could buy used. I buy refurbished on almost all my camera bodies. Um, and I've never had any issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I buy directly from Canon when I do it, but, uh, and same thing with the computers. I do that too, but, uh, you don't need a ton of lenses, you know, you, I think Canon, I don't know. You probably still get that, uh, 405.6. Uh, it's not even a zoom. If you remember that lens. Yep. No, I remember it. Yeah. Cause I had the Sigma version back then. Mm. Yeah. But uh, I <laughs> yeah. see a lot of, a lot of people in the field shooting mm -hmm. that, like, uh, what is it? The 100, uh, 600 or 200 to 600, uh, Tamron or something like that. Oh, the 150 oh, yeah. to 150 six. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. 150 to five and the 150 to six. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Just get, yep. get what you can afford. You know, if, if you want to get committed to wildlife, you know, if you need mm -hmm. to get out and shoot squirrels, shoot, you know, doves, whatever. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and learn, you know, how to get close and not disturb the animals. And, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know that I have one, just one piece of advice. I could go, I could rattle on all day long, but don't, don't get hung up on buying a bunch of gear would probably be my biggest tip. Uh, even though I, I, I've, I've made that mistake <laughs> and I think we all have, but oh yes. yeah. Uh, yeah. And you're yeah. always going to have to upgrade. So to me, if you're going to spend the money, spend it on lenses and tripods and mm -hmm. stuff that's, that's going to, kind of keep going with you so and uh well, and that's, that's it awesome. yeah so to your point just buy the best quality stuff you can at uh, at that time and it, it, like you said if you can afford a high-end tripod like my tripod it's a get so it's been mm. with me for i'm um, it's going on 15 years wow carbon yeah. fiber 6x i mean it's yeah. I mean, why, why do I need to change? You know what I mean? Unless it was a, yeah. a weight issue or something like that, but even carbon fiber back then was pretty lightweight. So I use it for video and, and landscape and, you know, everything. Right. So, yeah. so to that point, it's practically cost me nothing over the years. If you, you know, you, um, you know, spread it out. Right. So it, no, it's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, buy the best you can afford for sure. Moving forward. So. Yeah. And then, you know, like a lot of, I tell a lot of people that have, they're not going to get into wildlife just to buy, get a 50 millimeter, uh, the 1.8, they call them the nifty 50 and, mm -hmm. and get, get a, a standard, you know, body and, and learn how to take good pictures of that. I think the M50 seems to be the new yeah. hot little mirrorless camera. It does seem to be that. Um, yeah. yeah. So, and you can get the, the M to RF adapter, I guess that you could still shoot, you know, I don't know what the, that's a micro four thirds. I don't know what oh, that what, translates yeah, to. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, no, but that's a good point. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, but just, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and YouTube. <laughs> just, YouTube. You need to learn something. YouTube. <laughs> so, <laughs> not even just photography, man. I learn everything on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, Who needs cable uh, TV anymore, right? Yeah. You know, it's all there, right? So. Yeah, pretty much. So cool. Oh, he's back. <laughs> he's so. back. Yeah, I'm back to say it's an absolute pleasure, Mark. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah it was really nice meeting you for the first time. Yeah. I mean, we've talked on social a little bit, you know, following yeah. stuff a little bit behind, uh, you know, behind the scene on the DMs and stuff. But uh, I'm really happy you're able to join us. So yeah, hopefully we can shoot in person one day. Yeah, I was gonna say if you guys uh, should come down to the Tetons uh, about mid November and and. Uh, uh, take you around and get you on some some bulls of course you you guys have the big bulls up there in canada but um but yeah if you can come ever come down let me know we probably work something out and like we could go shoot together or something so made a note so yeah we're good <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely and the same goes for you mark coming up this way yeah yeah you know, let me get that that thing. passport i, I yeah. definitely want to want to go and yeah uh, and get up to canada because i it's like i said it's been over 30 years yeah, so yeah. It's changed we'll get you a little some, bit. Into some, we'll get you in some big bulls, big bull yeah. up here. Yeah. That's for sure. There's some so. big rams up here too. So yeah, yeah. yeah. no, yeah. I remember. I remember. So <laughs> yeah, for sure. I just didn't have the gear back then. So yeah, yeah no, 100. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Cool. So. Well, thanks again, Mark. Really appreciate. It. We're gonna thanks, Mark. Uh, sign off here, and I um, hope you enjoyed this episode of the Nature Photo Guys podcast. And we will uh, catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us on the Nature Photo Guys podcast. If you have any questions, contact us at info at thenaturephotoguys.ca or message us on Facebook and Instagram at the Nature Photo Guys podcast. 
visit YouTube and subscribe to our channel to watch all our latest videos. Or follow and listen to our latest podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or on our website at thenaturephotoguys.ca. We'll catch you next time on The Nature Photo Guys Podcast. Podcast.